Good morning and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Haley Hausman from Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. Thank you all so much for joining in to worship today. If you would join me in our call to worship, it's from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for the transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Our opening prayer today is one that I'm adapting from our hymnal on page 392. It's a prayer for a new heart. If you'll pray with me. God who is over us, God who is one of us, God who is. Give us pure hearts that we may see you, a humble heart that we may hear you, a heart of love that we may serve you, a heart of faith that we may abide in you. Amen. If you'd like to join me in saying the Apostles' Creed this morning, you may do so, or if you just want to listen in, you can do that as well. But here we go. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm chapter 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Seeing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people, sing praise to his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stay tuned for our children's sermon. Hey, you all. It's Pastor Haley. Can you believe that TVs and movies used to look like this? They used to all be in black and white. But then somebody invented color television and color film um, making, and so now things can be in color like this. Life looks so much different when everything is in color, right? Isn't this so much better? Can you imagine a world that was only one or two colors? How different would things look? I'm so thankful that we have all of these different colors that make our world so unique and vibrant and life-giving. Can you imagine just using one of two of these colors on everything? <laughs> I'm so thankful that we have boxes of crayons and markers and pencils and all kinds of things to give our world color and excitement. Each of these colors are all important. None of them is more important than another. They are all needed. And there is beauty that's found when all of these come together. We can most beautifully see the way that all of those colors work together well through the beauty of the rainbow. We first see the rainbow come into the Bible at Noah's Ark. 
the a rainbow appears after the world has been flooded. God gives the rainbow as a sign to Noah that never again will the earth be flooded with all of this water. The rainbow can also be a sign to us today that God is faithful and God keeps God's promises to his people. God's word continues on. And I'm so thankful for that as I'm so thankful for all the many colors in our rainbow. Today in our scripture reading in Acts chapter 9, there is a man named Saul. And Saul kind of sees his world in one way. Maybe we might say in a black and white kind of way. But as Saul meets with Jesus, the way that he sees things is changed. It's kind of like the switch flips from being black and white to seeing things in color. Now, today for our moment, I have a little um, activity or two for us to do that involves rainbows. The first one that I'm gonna do has to do with M&Ms and water. So if you wanna try this at home, you'll need some M&Ms, a white plate or a light colored plate and some water. Here we go. First rainbow experiment for the day. So I have my M&Ms and I'll place them out on my plate. You can see behind me here, I've got them all kind of arranged in order. I kind of put them in rainbow order as best that I could, but you can put yours in whatever order that you want yours to be. I'll put those on this plate so we can see what it will look like in just a minute whenever we pour some water on there. So here we go. All right, so this is what it looks like beforehand. I'm gonna add the water and see what it looks like. Okay, I added in the water. Watch what's happening. This is pretty cool. Check out our end result here. Look at all of those colors in the rainbow that can be found. Look how beautiful they are working together. Could you imagine if this was just black and white? It would look so much different. All right, you all, so our M&M rainbow experiment turned out beautifully. Look how beautiful all of those colors are. It's fantastic. So experiment number one was a success. Let's try experiment number two. To do this one, you'll need some jars or plastic cups, some paper towels and some food coloring along with some water to try this at home. So let's try this one together. All right, you all, so I'm ready for rainbow experiment number two. I've got out six cups and then every other cup I filled it with water about halfway full or to like the first little line on my cup. So that's in four of my cups that have water. Three don't have water. So it's water, no water, water, no water, water, no water, water. I also have red, blue, and yellow food coloring that I'm gonna put in the cups in just a second. I also have taken six paper towels and I've folded them up kind of like a fan that I'm gonna use in my cups. I'll put one in one in and let the other end hang over in just a second. But before I do that, I'm gonna add my food coloring to my water. So first I'm gonna start with red because red is the first color in our rainbow. So I'm gonna add four or five drops of red color to my first cup of water. I'm also going to put four or five drops of red color in my last cup as well. All right, I'll let that do its thing now. So red, and then I wanna do yellow. So in this um, third cup, I'm gonna put three or no, four or five drops of yellow food coloring. So there's my yellow and then I have blue still to do. So in the last one with water, I'm gonna put four or five drops of blue in here too. All right, 
And already you can see then I have two cups with red, one cup with yellow, and one cup with blue. And I have a spoon, I'm just gonna stir it around just a bit, just to kind of mix it, get it mixed up in there just a second. Okay, we're finished with that step. I have my food coloring, water in every other cup. I've got red space, then yellow space, then blue space, then red again at the end. I'm gonna take my paper towels, I'll put one end in the cup with the food coloring and the other end's gonna go in the empty cup. So kind of make like a little rainbow shape to put across from cup to cup. All right, so there's one down. Okay, so I've got everything set up. I've got my cups already with the paper towels in between, the water filled cup, then the empty cup, back and forth each one between red, yellow, blue, and red. Again, let's make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to the empty cups? What's gonna happen with the water? What color might they be? Let's wait and see. I'm gonna leave these to sit out overnight, and so I'll do that, and I'll come right back in just a second as far as video time is concerned. All right, you all, it's a new day, and look what happened with our cups. <laughs> Instead of having three colors, our colors have now multiplied, and we have six different colors. No longer do we just have red and yellow and blue, now we have orange, green, and purple too. How awesome is that? Aren't we thankful that God is a God of creativity and he creates lots of different colors that make our world look um, beautiful? Our God is a God of creativity and he enjoys lots of colors and he has created them for us to enjoy as well. And aren't we thankful for that? Our rainbow here is like God's love. The colors have just multiplied overnight. And aren't we so thankful that God loves us all? Aren't those rainbow experiments so fun and exciting? I love to see all of the colors and how beautiful they are together. Just remember now, and when you see a rainbow or see lots of colors in our world, be thankful that God gives us vision to see things. Be thankful that God gives us vision to see things through his eyes as well. And will you pray with me today? God, we give you thanks for the beauty of our world. Help us, Lord, to see things through your eyes. Help us, Lord, to have eyes of faith. God, we give you thanks for our whole world and for all of the people who live in it. We thank you, Lord, for the many, many colors of the rainbow and the many, many colors of the people who live in this world. We thank you, Lord, for your love for each and every one of us. Help us to continue to grow in your love and in your grace. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We'll now enter into a time of prayer. If there is something specific that you would like prayer for, please let me know. I'd be glad to pray with you about whatever is on your heart this morning. But if you will pray with me today. God, we just give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for life and for breath, for eyesight for hearing, for the senses that you have given us, Lord. God, we just give you thanks for the way that you have created us. And thank you, Lord, for being our creator. Lord, we thank you for your presence that is with us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is at work in us and in our world. And Lord, we just pray for your peace, that you would rule and reign in the way that only you can, Father. God, we just pray for justice, Lord, that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are fighting this COVID virus. We pray for those, Lord, who are suffering from it right now and from, for those who have been impacted by it financially or physically or in other ways, Lord. We just pray for recovery and for healing. Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to provide in the way that only you can, Lord. Lord, we continue to ask for a cure, for a miracle, Lord, um, that you would just provide a way for this virus to um, come to an end so that people would stop um, getting sick. Lord, we just pray. We just pray for your provision, God, and that you would provide. We pray for us, Lord, as we move forward and continue to um, go out a bit more than we have been for some of us, Lord. Um, we just pray that you would continue to help all of us to stay safe and to stay healthy. 
Lord, help us to have discernment and wisdom when it comes to doing things or maybe not doing things at this time, Lord. God, just continue to uh, meet the needs and help us to do what your will is, Lord. Lord, we just continue to lift up um, all of those who are watching this morning from home or from work or from wherever they are, Lord. God, just remind them of your presence. Wrap them up in your love and in your grace and give them strength today and courage today to face whatever it is that is going on in their lives. Lord, we pray for our Long Creek and Dalton City church families and our communities, Lord. God, we just ask that you would just continue to work in the way that only you can while we can't be um, together physically, Lord. Lord, we just um, give you praise, God, for all that you're doing and all that you will do. God, we give you thanks for the stories that you have given each of us. We thank you, Lord, that you have created and designed each one of us uniquely, Lord. And that means we each have this unique story of your love and of your grace and the way that you have been at work in our lives, Lord. God, help us to be bold and to share those stories with the world, Lord. Help us, Lord, to share your love and your light with others, God. Help us, Lord, um, just to be a reminder of your presence, that you are at work in our world, Lord. Father, we want to take time today as well for each one of us to lift up the things that are on our own hearts, and we'll do that now this morning. God, we give you thanks for hearing our prayers and for answering them in your way and in your timing. God, help all of us to continue to have or to have ears that hear and hands and feet that respond in obedience to whatever, to whatever it is that you are calling us to do. And we join in praying the prayer that Jesus taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When is the last time that you saw a movie or read a book where the villain of the story ended up becoming the hero? It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Um, some rare instances are those like Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, where the bad guy ends up becoming, you know, the good guy with a bigger heart. Or there's Gru and Despicable Me. Or you might think of Star Wars and some characters like Darth Vader or Ben Solo. The bad guys end up becoming the good guy or a hero in some way. Even in the Bible, there is at least one story about how the villain became the hero. Now, you may remember a guy in the Bible named Paul. He's pretty infamous for writing many books in the New Testament. But before he was Paul, he was a man named Saul. Today, that's the hero story that we're going to be taking a look at in the Bible. As we continue on throughout this month of June, we're talking about heroes of the Bible and telling our faith stories. And don't forget to send in your stories to me as well. So today, join me in Acts chapter 9 as we take a look at the backstory of Paul, who was Saul. Our reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 9, and it's the story of Saul's conversion. If you'll join, there, join me there in Acts chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. 
In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the most memorable movie moments happens in The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy has been hit in the head, and she's fallen down in the midst of the tornado, and she wakes up and suddenly her world looks different. Before this point in the movie, everything has been in black and white. Even, even the singing of the most famous song from the movie, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, is sung while she is still in black and white. Yet here we are after the tornado, Dorothy wakes up and suddenly everything looks different. Dorothy finds herself in a new world, in a new territory. She is not in Kansas anymore. And we, the watcher, are no longer seeing her in black and white. But now we see her in living color. This switch from black and white to color is like a changing of the lenses. The same thing or something similar could happen to us, spiritually speaking. When we come to faith in Jesus, we no longer see things the way that we did before. Things may become different or more vibrant, or we might see things in a new light because of our relationship with Jesus. When we come to faith in Christ, it may be that we no longer see things the same way. And as we journey with Jesus, our view of things may change as we take on his lenses and take off our own lenses. Things can change as we see things through the eyes of faith. Spiritually speaking, we can get new eyes when we come to faith in Jesus. I know for me personally, when I left a particular service as a youth, I was in high school, I remember leaving this particular service that was youth-led, and I remember leaving this service literally seeing things differently that day. I'd come into the service feeling some anger about some things that were happening in my life, but I left full of joy. The situations had not changed. The circumstances had not changed, but I had had an encounter with Jesus and I trusted the situation in my life to him. How about you? <laughs> Can you look back at moments in your own story and see how you began to see things differently or how you saw things differently because you had an encounter with Christ? For some of us, our coming to Christ moments or parts of our faith stories might be like the light switch being flipped on and things change immediately. At other times or for other people, our faith stories or our coming to Christ moments may be more like a dimmer switch where things don't automatically go from off to on but gradually change over time. No matter the way that we come to Christ or come to know Christ or what our faith journey or story looks like, the important thing is that Christ is in the story and is the star of the story and that we let his light shine in and through us. Whether our switch has been automatically flipped or if the dimmer has just been turned, it's important to allow God to work in and through us and to let his light to shine in our lives. 
It is through God's light that we are able to see things differently and to see our world differently. And literally, like, that's how we see colors and how we see things is through the light um, shining particular ways in our eyes. Spiritually speaking, we can see things differently through our relationship with Christ. The way that we once view things in our world can change through knowing him. The way that we view our world does not change um, automatically, but when we use our eyes of faith and allow God to work in, in us and through us into changing our view. In our passage in Acts chapter 9 today, Saul literally began to see things differently. It says that scales fell from his eyes when he encountered or had this encounter with the living Christ. He literally began to see things differently. He was blind, but now he could see through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in his life. Saul was changed for the better because he knew Jesus. Saul changed when his life was no longer about religion, but about relationship with Jesus. Saul was a devout Jew. He came from a devout Jewish family, and there is no doubt that he knew God's law, and he was trying to live that law out to a T. But Saul forgot the important piece of relationship, and it was through this encounter with Jesus that Saul began to have this one-on-one -on -one literal relationship with Christ. Saul was living by the law, but he was not living by love. But this encounter with Christ changed that for him. It changed that for those who were living at the time of Saul, and it changed us, and it changed the church for our time as well. Saul learned that life is not just about knowing the law, but also about knowing and living out the love of Jesus and the relationship that God offers to us. Being a follower of Jesus is not about religion. It is about relationship. Saul was a guy who literally hated the followers of Jesus. He was okay with Stephen being murdered. <laughs> He was okay with other Christians being murdered and being taken into prison. Saul himself was taking people off to prison. If you read his background a little bit in Acts chapter 7 and chapter 8, you see how mean of a man that he was. He was a guy who was not living out love but living out hatred. It tells us that Saul began to destroy the church in Acts chapter 8, and he would drag men and women off to prison. <laughs> Saul was not a guy that you would want to have a run-in with in the daylight, let alone in the dark. It tells us here in Acts chapter 9, verse 1, that Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. You could call him enemy number one of the early church. He was the villain in the story for the early church. But then, but then things changed because of his encounter with the living Christ. Before we talk a little bit more about Saul, let's talk about another character in this part of the story. There's a man in Damascus named Ananias. Now Ananias is a disciple of Jesus and he's doing his own thing. He's doing the business that God has called him to do and suddenly the Lord calls out to him, Ananias, and Ananias answers, and God tells Ananias to go and find this, girl, this guy named Saul. Ananias is minding his own business, and suddenly the Lord asks him to go and do something that seems crazy in human standards. Now, God told Ananias to go and see the person that all of the Christians are trying to avoid at this point in the story. It's like their house being on fire, and he is running right into it. It's a place where you don't want to go. God told Ananias to go and see the person that all the Christians are trying to avoid. It's like a suicide mission. <laughs> God gives Ananias some pretty specific instructions involving where he's going and who he is going to see. And there is no confusion here. This is definitely the Saul that Ananias is being sent to talk to. <laughs> not the one that anyone wants to go to talk to, let alone a follower of Jesus. 
This was the Saul who was persecuting the church. A point to note here is that God knew exactly who Saul was, where Saul was, and what Saul was doing. God knew who Ananias was, where Ananias was, what kind of character traits he had, and if he would be obedient and willing to do what God was asking him to do. God, too, knows the same things about all of us and even more. God knows us. He knows where we are. He knows our character traits. He knows if we are willing and obedient. If our hearts are following hard after him, God knows. God sees. God hears. God is present with us. God knows where we are and who he has created us to be. God sees us. He knows us. God knows our stories and he wants to be the star of our life stories. He wants to keep writing them and be right alongside us as the stories unfold. Now, despite Ananias' concerns about being sent to enemy number one of the church, Ananias is obedient. He trusts the Lord and he goes. He goes to see Saul in exactly the same place where the Lord told him to go, and he does exactly what the Lord had told him to do. And as they say, the rest is history. Ananias places his hands on Saul, and his eyes are healed. Saul is filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fall from Saul's eyes, and Saul can see again through the power of the Holy Spirit and God at work in his life. Now, Ananias didn't quite know all that God had planned and what all that God was going to do in and through Saul and in and through Ananias, really, as he went and was obedient to what God was calling him to do. We can relate to Ananias in that God wants to use us to impact other people we never know what God is going to do in and through us when we allow his Holy Spirit to move us and to lead us and to guide us and direct us. You never know how God might be using you to impact someone else's life in a positive way. We all have a story that can be about God's glory and bringing glory to God, the one who created us in the first place the one who wants to be and is the author of our life story. Like Ananias, we too are called to go. Sometimes the go is to a strange place or to a strange person like Ananias' situation here. Sometimes it might be to some place that's more comfortable or more familiar to us. It may just be to our own home or to our own family. But no matter the place or to the person, we are all called to go. To go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are all called to go and share our stories of how God has changed our lives. About how Jesus has changed and transformed us from the inside out. We are all called to go and share the good news of the gospel of God's great love for each and every one of us. No matter where we go or how we go or who we go to, we can remember that God goes with us, that he does not leave us nor forsake us. He has promised to be with us and God is faithful to keep his promises to us. So be strong and courageous because God goes with you. No matter where it is or to who it's to, God is with you and present with you and empowers you to do the things that God is calling you to do. Here in Acts chapter 9, even though Saul has had this major internal change, the external is still pretty much the same to those people who have been looking in from the outside. They think that he is still the same old Saul, the one who is persecuting the church and causing harm to them and wanting to kill them. Yet here in this story, Saul has been changed. Um, but the church is still afraid of him. Many of the people are still in fear of him. But thankfully, there's a friend named Barnabas who helps Saul to build some relationships with some of the other disciples and to kind of get Saul into um, the gang or into the groove and so that they can see for themselves that Saul really has been changed, that this is not just some fake story to kind of get his way into the church to cause even more harm, 
that Saul has really been changed from the inside out, that God has done a transformation and a major work in his life through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you keep reading through this, this chapter here in Acts chapter 9, you see that the early church really doesn't trust Saul quite yet. They don't quite know if this is really the true story. But as time goes out on, the word or the testimony of Paul's story keeps going out and going forth. And people hear about what has happened. Before the chapter is over, news about Saul's conversion spreads throughout the church here. And people start to think and hear and know more about Saul and about how he has been changed through this encounter with Christ. Brave Barnabas, a disciple of Jesus, takes Saul in kind of under his wing and helps Saul to build some relationships with some other disciples or apostles within the church. Saul, the one who had previously persecuted the church, begins to fearlessly praise and proclaim the name of the Lord. Instead of the people running in fear, they now come to know the power of the risen Christ. People begin to have faith instead of fear. Saul, the one who had previously persecuted the church, begins to preach fearlessly in the name of Jesus. That's a life change. Instead of causing fear in the followers of Jesus, Saul now fearlessly proclaims the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the way that only the Holy Spirit can be at work. The one who used to want to kill people is now kind to people. The enemy has become a friend. The villain becomes a hero in this story as it continues to unfold. This is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. The one who used to want to kill Christians is now kind to Christians. The one who used to be the villain in the story has now become a part of the story and is becoming a hero in the story as well. That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Our God is in the business of changing hearts and lives. God was in the business of changing hearts and lives in the early church. And God is still in the business of changing hearts and lives in the church today. God helps us to see our world with different lenses. He gives us fresh eyes of faith as we focus in on him. As we set our eyes on Jesus and run hard after the prize of knowing him. In our churches, we started out the year talking about 2020 vision and setting our eyes on Jesus. And I wonder, how's your vision? <laughs> How is your 2020 vision? A lot has happened in the midst to cause it to maybe be a little bit blurry or to, uh, to take our eyes off of Jesus. But I wonder, how is your 2020 vision? What are your eyes set on? Is Jesus changing and transforming you? Is your life about religion or relationship? Like Saul, has your life been changed because of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you? Like Ananias, have you allowed God to use you to impact someone else's life? through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our stories, our stories make a difference and impact our world. Are you using your story for good? Are you using your story for God's glory? Circling back to the Wizard of Oz, you know that the main character is Dorothy, but do you know Dorothy's back story? Now, those of you who live near here may already know this, but I recently learned that Dorothy is buried in Bloomington. Yeah, Bloomington, that Bloomington, that's like an hour or less than an hour away from here. So of course, me being me and loving the Wizard of Oz, you know that I had to take a field trip. So it happened that this week was the week for me to go and do that. 
So here's a little video clip. Take a look. Dorothy Louise Gage was the niece of the author of The Wizard of Oz, L. Frank Baum. What you may not know is that Dorothy, the real Dorothy, only lived to five months old. And in the midst of the grief after her loss, Baum changed the name of the character in the story that he was writing to Dorothy. And so Dorothy, Dorothy Gage, has outlived her life through the story that we know as the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy Gage became Dorothy Gale. <laughs> Dorothy, Dorothy Gage, has outlived her life through the power of story, through the power of the story of Dorothy Gale of Kansas. Now her uncle had no idea the impact that this story would have for generations to come. He was wanting to bring peace to his wife's pain in the midst of the loss of her beloved niece. I would say that some purpose has been brought to the pain. Now, God did not cause this pain, but God has brought some purpose to this pain that this family experienced. God is able to do similar things with our stories as well. God does not cause the pain, but God can bring purpose to the pain when we put the pieces in his hands. There is hope and healing to the bruised and broken. That is the good news of the gospel. That is the good news of the love of Jesus, the one who brings us peace and healing and hope and wholeness. That is the good news. There is power in that story. Our God is a redeemer, and God is a redeemer of our stories. Imagine what God can do in and through you if he could do all that he has done through a guy like Saul. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter so much what has happened in our past. What does matter is our present and our future. Are we allowing God to use us, to mold and shape us into the image of Jesus? Are we becoming more and more like Christ or more and more like something else? Are we being obedient to all that God is calling us to do? Are we reaching out to others? Are we loving one another? Those are the things that do matter. The thing that matters is not so much our past, but how we love God and love our neighbor today. And how we love God and love our neighbor tomorrow and every day after that. We never know what God may have in store. God is able to bring good even out of the worst of circumstances that happen in our lives. Prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit changes things. It changes us. Prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit changes our world. When we give God back the pen of our life stories, there is no telling what can happen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, even the villains in a story can become the heroes of faith. Even the worst circumstances that might happen in our lives can be used for good when we allow God to work in them. God can turn our brokenness into something beautiful. Will you allow him to use your story for his glory today. We pray with me. God, thank you for the power of story. Help us, Lord, to share our stories with others. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and for loving us enough to be a part of our story and to be the author of our life story. You, God, can change stories of doom and gloom into stories about your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
If you would like to extend your worship through the giving of your tithes and offerings today, you can do so through sending in your offering to either of the churches. You can also send it to Lenny or Carol. You can also give online through the Illinois Great Rivers Conference website. Just a couple bits of information this week. On Tuesday night, the Long Creek Admin Council will be meeting on Zoom at 7 o'clock. On Wednesday night, the Dalton City VBS Vacation Bible School um, group will be talking on Wednesday night on Zoom to talk about Vacation Bible School. We are still meeting on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock on Zoom. Anybody is welcome to join in on that conversation. Just let me know if you need the link or more information. We're going to continue meeting online at least for the next couple weeks. Stay tuned as we make plans into how we'll be gathering together for worship again, hopefully in the coming weeks. This month is about telling our stories. Thank you to those of you who have sent in a story. A couple of you did that for me this week, but I know there are still lots of you who have stories to share, and I encourage you to do that. If technology is the only like stumbling block that you have, let me know, and I will come help you with that piece of it as well. So... Share your stories. They are about God's glory. So let's share them with one another. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and his love. God bless y'all and have a great week.